Uh, hey, welcome, or welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is, this particular look has been created with two different eyeshadow palettes. Oh yes, it's another palette battle. Now, on one side of my face, it's the Jeffree Star Androgyny palette. And on the other one, is the Makeup Obsession London Calling palette. Can you work out which is which? Which one have I got on my right side? And which one do I have on my left? Comment down below before you start watching the film. Let me know if you got it right. And yes, I am very annoyed about this cover. But don't worry. I'm, I'm going to be very salty about it throughout the film. Just as a prior warning there for you. So, if you want to find out whether your guess is right as to which side is Jeffrey and which side is Makeup Obsession, which is one of the Revolution uh, companies under the Revolution umbrella, then my friend, you. You are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. You will have seen in the intro, this is another one of my palette battles or palette face-offs or whatever I eventually ended up calling this series between the New Revolution London's Calling and the Jeffrey Androgyny. Before I open these up, I do have something I want to say. Revolution. Adam Minto. I'm guessing you had to have signed off on this, right? Who didn't bother to check the Union flag? It's not a Union Jack, it's only a Union Jack when it's, flow, when it's flown at sea. Union flag. Incorrect. This stripe is correct. This one, the red stripe, should be this side. This one's correct. This one, the red stripe, should be this side. Really? You're a UK company. You should at least know what our damn flag looks like. That has really pissed me off. You know I'm annoyed. I don't normally swear on here apart from the old bloody. That has really annoyed me. Anyway. I spotted this on Revolution's site. Six quid. And when I originally saw the inside on screen I don't know whether it was that my monitor displayed them looking a bit differently but to me they it didn't twig that it was a dupe until it arrived and I opened it up and I'm like bottom row pretty much bang on top row well, the middle shade should be orange, not coral. But, um... So their tinned Forever Flawless Ice is a dupe for Jeffrey's Blue Blood and now apparently London's calling is a dupe for Androgyny. I have done side-by-side -side swatches. I'm going to chuck those up on screen for you. The swatch at the top 
when you look at it, the swatches at the top are London's Cooling, the bottom ones are Jeffrey's Androgyny. So the first two colours are Crown from London's Calling and Frosting from Androgyny, Tea and Safe Word, Kensington and Charm, Rebel and Deja Vu, Earl Grey and Dominatrix, Corgi and Androgyny, Royalty and Fetish, Hyde Park and Military, Underground, Poison and finally Regal and Swallow. Okay, back to me. So you can see there pretty close. The bottom row is closer in tones than the top row is, but again, six quid, forty odd quid, I'm guessing you're going to get similar looks out of it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see how similar I can get these looking. Now you will have seen my look already that I have completed from the intro. Uh, if I remember I'll put a picture of it here. So which side is Jeffrey and which side is Revolution? I have got my microfiber cloth here as you can see it's Believe it or not, this is the clean side, uh, but it's very stained from pigments and stuff. But this is what I use for changing colours on my brushes. So, which side is Jeffrey? Which side is Revolution? I don't know yet, because I actually haven't chosen which side is going to be which. Right, uh, this is a teaching channel so I do go in depth, more in depth than most channels do when it comes to instructing you how to create a look um, and also with my chronic pain I, I can't blend as quickly as, as I used to. So if you're finding that I'm going too slow for you just use the speed widget and speed me up. Okay. I'm not going to be offended because, sweetheart, unless you tell me, I am not going to know. Let's get you zoomed in. Oh, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And on my eyes, as ever, is my Crow and Pebble Cotton Eyeshadow Primer. Any discount codes that apply will be listed in the description box below. Now, just quickly I'll go through eye shapes. I've got deep set eyes. I'm starting to hear them referred to as double lidded eyes recently. Um, a lot of people with eyes like mine get told or mistakenly think that they have hooded eyes. There's a very very big difference. Let me explain to you. If you relax your brows and look straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got a hooded lid. If your upper lid completely covers your lower lid right down to the lash line on any part of that mobile lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eyelid. You can still follow my tutorial. You can still follow anybody's tutorials. Get a brush like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you'll be fine. Now the reason that people with deep set eyes get the same issues, i.e. we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid, if we're cutting our lid, we have to we can't just do the socket, we have to go up onto the upper lid itself. And even when we use glitter glue, we get bare patches here. Let me show you why. If I cover the visible mobile lid close my eye, you can see there's as much lid again that folds back away. All right? And if I cover the static lid at the top and do the same thing, you can see there's a lid there that tucks back as well. And that's why you get the transference because you've got the two bits of the lid rubbing against each other. Now with ours it's slightly different. When we're putting colour through our crease, 
if we want it to show when our brows are relaxed we have to relax our brows sit back and look and just see whether we've come up high enough here all right it's that simple right time to start putting some color on my face all my brushes are clean um, some of them are stained from pigment usage but they are all clean because I sat down yesterday and cleaned all of them so this is one of the Aliexpress brushes that I recommended and this is tapered blending brush 6 but I'm going to do Jeffrey this side and I'm going to do revolution this side did you get it right so my right side is Jeffrey and my left side for revolution let me know if you got it right or not okay I'm going to start off by going into safe word which I really wish Jeffrey would release in a large pan because it is absolutely perfect for a contour shade for pale peoples like myself now I like to leave a good sort of three four mils below my the brow before I put any colour on and I do circular movements the beauty of this eyeshadow primer is it's not sticky so you can blend straight away without needing to set it awesome um, I'm doing circular movements going towards the nose as I come in and then reverse in the direction and coming away from the nose on the way back out and the reason I do that because A, I'm 45 years old, B, I've lost about 13 stone, so the skin on my lids moves. And when you're doing this, you're very, very gently moving the skin around. So when you're blending it, you shouldn't end up with any white patches anywhere. Now, I do sometimes get them on this eye, because this is the eye I'm blinding. I got pulled around a lot at the hospital when I was five years old, and you can see how deep that crease is there. I do sometimes have to stretch the lid out to make sure that I've got that all covered but do not do that unless you absolutely have to otherwise you will end up getting creases that deep and I can assure you you only ever get worse. I do struggle sometimes here and here with creasing and dryness on my lids sometimes to get pigment to stay put but this Jeffrey one, as ever, is doing just fine. I'm just blending that out. Right, grab my microfiber cloth, clean the brush off, so I'm using exactly the same brush. Give this as fair a chance as possible. I still haven't got around to using Jeffrey's brushes yet, but I want to do that on a time when I'm using a palette I've already used so that I know how well it the brushes are performing if you know what I mean by that okay there's a lot of kick up in the pan in this revolution one that's not too much of an issue though because at least it means you're getting pigment onto your brush and you can always go back in and pick the pigment up again next time you go into the pan one thing I like about these ones this is their makeup obsession range and these are all, they've got like little, little finger notches. So it's easy to pop these out. So if you're going away anywhere, it's very, very easy just to pop out your favourite shade, stick them into a, um, like a, a, an empty magnetic palette. And then you've got your own custom palette to take away with you rather than, say, having to take. See, if I was doing this, I'd probably take Safe Word and these two and maybe Dominatrix and then chuck some different ones in, some brighter ones from, you know, some of my Coloured Rain ones maybe, or it does just give you a little bit more um, flexibility with them where they're so easy just to pop out. You can see that's actually quite close in time. I am having to build the pigment up more on this side. But that's not surprising because Jeffrey's palettes are very pigmented and the Revolution ones tend to be 
less pigmented on initial application and need more building up. But that's done so that absolute beginners aren't suddenly scared by seeing a huge amount of colour on their lid. Um, you can see the colour can be built up to match. So, okay, well, so far, T and Safe Word both appear to be behaving the same. Right, I'm going to go into Androgyny because it is my favourite shade from this palette. And I'm going to start off by windscreen wipering through the crease like so. And then I'm going to do circular movements but I'm going to keep the brush in contact with that first crease line so that I don't take it too high up my eyelid because I still want to be able to see safe word underneath it and above it. So I'm just giving this a good old buff. I really like these palettes of his. Um, his uh, Jeffrey's palettes have got noticeably better in formula over the years. This is the second palette that he re released after the Beauty Killer. But for a long, long time, this was my favourite of his palettes because I absolutely love the colour scheme. It's grungy, it's. Um, but it has, you know, if you run along the top row, you, you have the option. I think I've got a film where I've done that just using the top row of this palette because a friend of mine asked me to, to do that to show her. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean any pigment off of that brush and pick up a little bit more of Safe Word and just really lightly buff where the two colours meet just to soften the blend on the edge there just a little bit but by adding a touch of Safe Word to the brush it stops you from buffing away all the pigment Right, so the equivalent for androgyny in this one is Corgi. Again, a lot of kick up in pan. But again, that really doesn't worry me. You can see straight away the, the difference in the amount of pigment that initially gets laid down though. But as I said, providing the pigment builds up, it doesn't worry me that it goes on initially a bit less vibrant because as I said then for complete beginners it won't be as daunting to suddenly see warmth there you go pigment deal with it I'm going up and down like this here because of the deep creasing there you can see I think just the fine tiger striping that I'm getting but as this is not the deepest colour that I'm putting through the crease yet I'm not going to pull the lid around until I get to that stage. I'm just going to build this colour up on the outside edge here. Try and get it to match this side. I always sit back and check that I've got about the same shape as well because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. So it's always a good idea every so often just to relax your brows and just look and make sure you've got matching shapes. Now see I'm, I'm getting a, like a bearer patch here. This is what I was saying about I get dry patches there. So if that happens to you, just stamp the pigment on rather than blending it and just very, very lightly stamp backwards and forwards to soften the edge. Okay. I always get more fallout this side because that eyelid moves more. I go back in like I did before, pick up a little bit of tea just to buff along that edge and make that blend a little bit softer. So, 
So far so good folks, so far so good. Right, so I'm going to grab... This is a Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into... What shade do I want to go into? I think I'm going to go into Dominatrix, which is the brown. And I'm going to run that straight through the crease, right the way to the inner corner. Circular movements. Just relaxing my brow to make sure I can still see it above there, which I can. That's good. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of the pigment on the outer third of my mobile lid. I'm going to take some of the pigment off of this brush because I forgot how pigmented Dominatrix was. And I'm just going to very lightly buff all the way along just to soften the edge of that because I don't want to lose the red, the uh, androgyny, the, the mauve that we put down. So I'm literally just gently buffing at the edge to soften it. Time to go into Earl Grey and see whether it can give us an equal oomph. I'm expecting to have to build this up a considerable amount to get it to match. So. But it is building. And it's building quite nicely. So if you've, if you've uh, longed for androgyny and have uh, not been able to afford it, this could be a more economic option for you. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken them this long to copy it, because this palette was out in, what, 20, 2015, 2016 was it this came out? I think, I think it was 2016 or 17. Okay. Clean the brush off, and I'm going to grab a, another one of the, this is the medium shader brush too, from that AliExpress set. Let me grab my, I'm going to use this to wet the pigment with, it's the I Heart Revolution Fixing Spray in Vanilla and coconut, never put a wet brush into a dry pigment. You will get hard pan and it will eventually go down and ruin the whole of the pigment itself. So you might get away with it a couple of times by scratching the hard pan off, but eventually you will bugger the whole thing up. Right, so I've put pigment on both sides. I've gone into Deja Vu in the Jeffrey one. I'm just going to wet that. Now I'm going to dry the ferrules off just by rubbing it against my fingers like this so that we don't get any moisture going down and loosening these bristles and I'm going to apply this to the two thirds of the lid but so far hasn't seen any action now I'm not cutting the lid by putting either a primer or a concealer down because as you can see the Jeffrey um, pigment or the Jeffrey shadow so I don't think any of these are pink I don't know fetish might be because it's red but there's enough opacity in this shade to go over that deep brown. And I'm just going to buff very lightly 
where the shimmer meets the deep brown at the edge just to soften the blend somewhat clean and dry the brush and then I'm going to go into the corresponding shade in the London Calling palette which is a Rebel looks very similar on the brush Now, with this lid I do have to stretch it out otherwise it fills the creases up with loose pigment rather than blended pigment and uh, as I blink through the day I get showers of pigment coming down which if I'm looking for a multicoloured freckles that's a great shortcut but not the look I'm planning for for today. Okay, well it seems that this has an equal amount of opacity and will also cover the brown mat. Hmm. Interesting. Right, I'm going to pause you now while I um, go and put some foundation on and do the rest of the bits on my face and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, you will see me immediately. I will see you at the very next time that I press the record button. So, hi. Okay, I am back. So I'm going to grab uh, this little brush that we used before and I'm going to go into Poison in Androgyny which is that gorgeous deep bottle Actually it's more like a deep teal than a bottle green It's normally described as a bottle green but to me that's a deep teal So I'm going to pop that just under the lower lash line Nearly went in to do exactly the same thing on the other side, forgetting I'm doing a palette battle. Well done, bomber. Right, so now going into underground. Going underground. Love a little bit of the jam. Okay. Clean that brush off. And now this brush, I love this. This is the brush that was in the Tarte Swamp Queen palette, the one they did with Graveyard Girl. But it's flat on the top and it's chunky, so it's great for getting up underneath your bottom lashes. So I'm going to go into Military in Androgyny, which is that gorgeous olive green. I'm just going to use that to buff the lower lash line out a little bit. Just to soften the line a bit. Clean the brush. And then go into Hyde Park, which is the equivalent colour in the... London's calling palette. And managed to go too low with it. Well done, and this is just a dry cloth. In case you're wondering. Jeffrey's side a little bit lower. It's alright, I don't mind doing a grungy look. There. Yeah. 
Okay, to be honest, it's looking pretty comfortable to me from where I'm sitting right now. Right, I'm going to go into this Laura Mercier Fall in Love highlighter set. Now, this one is fractionally too dark and this one is very, very much too dark. But um, I might try this on the inner corner. This is uh, this is shade Devotion, and this is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay years ago. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on the inner corner because it is going to be. Yeah, you can see that's actually quite, quite dark. That's not even bright enough for the inner corner, is it? Right, okay, I'm going to go into the gold next to it instead, which is Addiction. There we go, that's better. I picked this up from a Depop because I've been so tempted by these Laura Mercier ones with their sort of rippled finish to them but I didn't want to pay Laura Mercier prices for them so I didn't <laughs> right now I'm going to go into this beautiful beautiful pale pink which is shade no hang on the first shade that I put on here was too dark was indiscretion, I beg your pardon. Now then I went in with addiction, now I'm going to go in with devotion. Why can't they just put the bloody names on the palette? I'm just going to pop that up under the brow. Um, like so. And I'm going to pause you oh, one last time while I pop some of this highlight on the rest of my face chuck some mascara on, throw on a lippy and I will be back with my, f oh and do something with my hair and I'll be back with the final look and final thoughts so again, I'll see you right now so there you go this is the final look with androgyny this side makeup obsession which is one of the revolution brands this side pretty comparable huh if you can't afford this but you want this color scheme i'd say grab this for six quid yes you have to build the color up a little bit more than you do with the Jeffrey palette but it's a six pound palette folks what exactly are you expecting for six pounds hmm? um, the mascara that I used is the essence lash princess in green and the lippy is a little mini bite lipstick that I got because I can't get those in the UK again I got that from a reseller site from Depop in shade fig which I don't really think goes with the eye look but do you know what it's on there now it's fine I'm doing the outro about to record the intro afterwards so what do you think and what do you think about the fact that a UK retailer can't even get the bloody flag right That is disgraceful. It really is. There's absolutely no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it at all. Right. <sighs> Chill, Mama. Chill. Okay. If you are one of my 4F babies, please, please double check you are still subscribed because people are still getting unsubscribed. Uh, I don't know what YouTube is playing at right now, but 
It's not being very friendly to uh, smaller channels right now. They seem to be going through a, if you're Jake Paul or James Charles, you can do whatever you like and get away with it. But if you're anybody else, no. Nah. We're not going to show your films to people. We're not going to notify people that have requested they want to see your films. In fact, we're even going to unsubscribe people from your channel because we don't think they really want to watch you in the first place. <sighs> Frustrating. However, I hope you enjoyed this. If you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm not always as salty as I was in this particular one, but I get very upset when the flag is portrayed wrong. I used to work for the Royal British Legion for nearly just under seven years, and I spoke with veterans who had risked their lives, put their lives on the line under this flag, who lost friends under this flag, who lost family members under this flag. It's an absolute disgrace, for, especially for a British company, not to get it right. To the point that I am probably going to declutter this straight away. That's how strongly I feel about it. <sighs> Besides which, why do I need it if I've got androgyny? But, if you are new here, uh, there are plenty of other films you can watch if you want to find out what I'm like when I'm not being a salty bitch. Um, and I hope that after having watched some of them, you might like to join the 4F family. Subscribe, click the notification button, and ring my bell. Ring my bell. Just make sure you choose all notifications, otherwise you'll get no notifications, and even if you do press all notifications, you may not get any anyway. Right, that's quite enough blethering from me. I need to go and film the intro for this and then go and edit the film. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>